Here we have an equilateral triangle ABC and we have two circles that are tangent to each other. The point of tangency is point D. The large circle is a circumscribed circle around the triangle ABC. The small circle is tangent to the side AB and side AC and points of tangency are point E and point F. And we ask to find the ratio of the blue area to the orange area. This problem is solved quite easily if you notice that AD, the line that connects point A and D, is a bisector of the angle A, and also the centers of both circles, point G and point H, are lying on the segment AD. Right now we're going to use this fact, we're going to solve this problem assuming that statement is correct, and at the end of this video we're going to prove this. Since the center of the big circle, point H, is on the segment AD, segment AD is a diameter of the large circle. So if we denote the radius of the large circle as big letter R, AD will be equal to 2R. Now let's connect point G and point F. This is the radius of a small circle. And since AC is tangent to the small circle and point F is point of tangency, GF will be at 90 degrees to AC. And since AD is a bisector of angle A, and angle A in the triangle ABC is 60 degrees because this is an equilateral triangle, it means that this bottom part here, angle GAC, should be half of 60 degrees, and that is 30 degrees. And now if you look at the triangle AGF, we find one angle is 30 degrees, the other angle is 90 degrees, and the third angle has to be 60 degrees. So this is what's called 30, 60, 90 degree triangle. And we know a lot about 30, 60, 90 degree triangles. If you're not familiar with them, I left a link here that you can go and learn about them. But for now, what we need to know is that the side that is opposite of the angle of 30 degrees, in our case, it's the side GF, is half of the hypotenuse AG. And if you denote the radius of the small circle as the small letter R, AG should be equal to 2R. Now, if we consider the diameter of the large circle AD, it consists of AG, which is 2 times small r, and the segment GD, which is the radius of the small circle, 1r. So total AD will be 3r. Previously, we showed that AD is 2 times radius of the large circle. Now we show that AD is 3 times radius of the small circle which means that the ratio of the big radius to the small radius is equal to 3 half. And now we can calculate the ratio of the areas. Notice that blue area is the area of the large circle, which is P times big R squared, minus the area of the small circle, which is P times small R squared. And we divide it by orange area, which is the area of the small circle. Now, if you simplify this expression and use the fact that big R over small r is 3 half, we get that this ratio of the areas is 5 fourth. And that's the final answer. We now we're almost done with this problem. The only thing we need to show is the fact that points A, H, G, and D lie on the same line, and also AD is the bisector of angle A. So let's do that. First of all, let's talk about point H, which is the center of the large circle. So this is a circumscribed circle around the triangle ABC. And as we know, if we have a circumscribed circle around the triangle, arbitrary triangle, if it's the center of the circle point H shown here, that center of a circle lays 
at the point of intersection of normal side bisectors of this triangle. Normal side bisector means that it's going to be this blue line. And the fact that it's a normal side bisector means that this line is at 90 degrees or normal to the side of the triangle. And also it is a bisector of the side. It means that it split this side into two equal parts. And the center of circumscribed circle is going to lay at the intersection of normal side bisectors. There are three normal side bisectors. One is shown here. It's a normal side bisector for this bottom side of the triangle. There's also normal side bisector that goes from the left side, and there's a normal side bisector that goes from the right side. But this is true for an arbitrary triangle. In our case, we don't have an arbitrary triangle. We have an equilateral triangle. And in equilateral triangle, normal side bisectors, regular side bisectors, altitudes, and angle bisectors represent the same lines. And that means that in our equilateral triangle ABC, point H lies on the angle A bisector. It also lies on angle B bisector and also lies on the angle C bisector. Now let's look at the point G. As we know, GF is the radius of a small circle and GF is at 90 degrees to AC. In a similar manner, EG equals to the radius of the small circle and EG is at 90 degrees to AB. But that means that point G is at equal distance from both sides of the angle A, from the side AB and from the side AC. And as we know from geometry, the points that are equally distant from both sides of an angle, both rays of an angle, lie on angle bisector. If you're not familiar with this fact, you can easily prove it by looking at the triangle AEG and triangle AFG. Those triangles are congruent by two sides because those triangles share the hypotenuse and also they have a congruent leg over here. And when triangles are congruent, the respective angles are congruent, and that means that this angle A right here for the top triangle equals to the angle A right here for the bottom triangle, but that means that AG split the angle A into two halves, and that means that AG is a bisector of angle A. So, so far we show that AH is a bisector of angle A, and AG is a bisector of angle A. Angle A has only one bisector. That means that all three points, A, H, and G, are on the same line. And that line is a bisector of the angle A. Now, what about point D? Now we need to show that this line goes through the point D. To see that this is the case, let's consider the point D, which is point of tangency of two circles. And what it really means that we can draw a tangent line through point D, and that line will be tangent to both of these circles at the same time. We also know that the center of a circle lies on the line that is at 90 degrees to a tangent line and goes through the point of tangency. And in our case, it means that this black line has to go through both point G and point H. So right now we show that points H, G, and D lie on the same line. Previously, we showed that point A, H, and G lie on the same line, which is a bisector of the angle A. Since we can only draw one line through point H and G, it means that all four points A, 
H, G, and D have to be on the same line. And that line will be a bisector of angle A. And that completes the problem.